power rockets, turning the whole reactor into a volcanic steam pressure cooker. Почему света? Скорее, 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 посмотрите все. Посмотрите на пульт. Что показывают дачи? После первого взрыва я... After the first explosion, I thought the problem was a hydraulic blast in the de-aerators. Хотел побежать. I wanted to try to switch the setting to compensate, but then the second explosion happened. Но прогремел второй взрыв. Буквально там через... Seconds after the first blast, we heard the second, a massive explosion. I didn't know what it was. We only felt the blast wave. It smashed my door. With a 500-ton safety cap blown off and air being sucked in below, the reactor becomes a giant blowtorch, blasting 50 tons of nuclear fuel into the atmosphere, 10 times Hiroshima. 700 tons of radioactive graphite are blown around the plant. Clouds of dust are sucked into the control room, accompanied by a strange smell. Gases released from the core leave a metallic taste, like ozone after a thunderstorm. It is, in fact, the stench of death. The dust is the cloak of the invisible killer of radiation. The control room operators are far enough away from the reactor's core to survive the explosion. But some will wish they had not. Many will face days, weeks, even years of agony as radiation burns them to death from the inside. <laughs> what struck me was what had happened to my wall. It's cast concrete, a meter thick. I saw it in the corner of my room, bending, as if it was made of rubber, like this. It got dark immediately. The lights went out. Steam wrapped around everything. Dust, steam, darkness, and a horrible hissing noise. I thought it could be an earthquake or maybe war. The reactor was the last thing on my mind. That was my operator, Viktor Dektorenko. I only recognized him by his voice. His face was burnt, all covered in blood. Viktor was still in shock. He said to me that he had been near the pumps together with Rusinovsky, the second pump operator, and that he stayed there, and I should help them. When I reached him, he was shivering. You know, when a man is in shock, he just indicated with his hands and said, Come on, Nikos, you're too cool. 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 Come on, Nikos, you
But what did I find? Ruins, that's all I saw. If he had been there, he would have been buried under the pillars. In place of the ceiling, there was only sky. A sky full of stars. At 3 a.m. I was vomiting violently. It was the first sign of radiation sickness. At 6 o'clock I couldn't even get to the first aid post by myself. They helped me there, put me in an ambulance and took me to the medical station. Sasha Yevchenko will survive. Others are dying. The radioactivity pours out of the reactor to be blown across Belarusia towards the heart of Europe. The real nightmare is still to come. By the morning of April the 26th, the KGB was filming the devastated scene of the worst nuclear accident in history. Whoever shot this declassified KGB footage absorbed a massive dose of radiation. The next day, the people of Pripyat were officially told the worst. The following night I was taken to Moscow by plane. Only five people survived from those who were on board. Then my family was evacuated with the entire city. It would take a full week for all 135,000 people to be evacuated. The radiation count was so high the flashes from it burned straight onto this film. A 30-kilometer zone of exclusion was declared. A zone frozen in time like a modern Pompeii. Over 600,000 Soviet men and women were brought in to contain the radioactivity. They worked in hellish, often chaotic conditions with extraordinary bravery in order to safeguard the rest of the world. Many of them had no protective clothing whatsoever. Everything they touched burned with radioactivity. The poisonous clouds spread beyond borders, across much of the northern hemisphere, washed into the earth by the rain. The radioactive dust lives on in plants, animals, and human beings. Within the Soviet Union, in the changing times of a new openness, the political effect was profound. As 
I think in both a, a symbolic and a very real way, Chernobyl was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. I think in a symbolic way, the sort of meltdown, the explosion, was caused by all the inherent contradictions in the Soviet system, and therefore it's, it's, it's a very good paradigm, if you like, symbol of, 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 of what was to happen. Chernobyl's death toll, though horrifying, has turned out to be smaller than many first feared. The scientific consensus is that it will cause some 10,000 cancers in Russia and 25,000 worldwide over a 70-year period. As yet, the only proven rise in disease is in thyroid cancers in children. It is in individual human lives that the cost is most visible. The fishermen spent the night watching the firemen fight the radioactive blaze until they started to feel ill. Within hours, their skin went black, a nuclear tan that foreshadowed their deaths. Thirty workers, including fire crew on the site, died from acute radiation poisoning. Valera Kademchuk was vaporized in the explosion while at his post in the pump room. Valery Paravijenko <laughs> died six weeks later of radiation burns, suffered trying to find his friend Kademchuk. Alexander Akimov died 15 days after the explosion from radiation poisoning. As long as he could speak, he said, I did everything right. I don't understand why it happened. Leonid Toptinov died three days after Akimov. He too protested his innocence to the grave, saying he'd done everything he could. The chief engineer of Chernobyl, Nikolai Fomin was sentenced to 10 years hard labor, but was soon released due to a mental breakdown. He's now said to drift in and out of lucidity. Miraculously, Sasha Yevchenko survived, as did his wife Natasha and their son Kirill. But that night lives on in his memory and in his body. I had 15 skin graft operations in the first year. The burns didn't show themselves at once. They appeared after I got to the hospital in Moscow. They ripened. When I was in the recovery unit, my skin was all black. When they pulled back the sheets, my skin peeled off like Xerox powder. I have to be careful now. For instance, I can drive a car, but I can't do repairs. I can't touch petrol or oil. The wounds won't heal. The blood won't congeal properly. There are other things, but you get used to them. You just live with it. You have to. Anatoly Dyatlov received a massive 390 rem of radiation. But even this five lifetimes worth of radiation didn't kill him. He lived on till 1995, when he died of a heart attack. Dyatlov served four years of his 10-year sentence. And in a remarkable interview given shortly before he died, he argued that in the battle between himself and the reactor, only one side could be blamed. The reactor shouldn't have been in operation. The real blame lies with the atomic energy authorities. Not having the correct documentation when and where it was needed made the explosion of the reactor inevitable. The reactor marched straight to its doom. 